A golden break is where you pocket the nine on the snap for an early game victory. Sometimes this occurs due to blind luck. In this video, I show several techniques that improve your chances with skill and knowledge. First, let's take a brief look at standard nine ball break strategy from my best pool break shots video. With a standard nine ball side break, the main goal is to pocket the wing ball and get a look at the one after the break. The second row ball sometimes banks cross side, and the back ball sometimes banks straight back. Here, Jeffrey DeLuna pockets five balls on the break. Watch the action of the cue ball. Great action on that cue ball. Oh, Look at this break. What a break. One golden break approach is a cut break, where you hit the one non-square to send the cue ball off the side rail into the stationary nine to pocket it in the corner or side. Obviously, this approach works only if the balls are racked tightly, ensuring the nine doesn't move much or at all with the initial hit on the one. For advice on how to get a tight rack, see the link in the video description. Here are some examples of the golden cut break, all from the same pro tournament. The nine can go in the corner. It can go on the side. The cue ball can carry him off another ball and still pocket the nine. And the nine can be banked cross side. Nine ball's close. Nine ball's close. Nine ball is close. This is just incredible. Another approach is to hit the one squarely from close to the center of the table to combo the back ball into the nine. This can pocket the nine in the side or upper corner. As with the cut break, this approach works only if the nine remains nearly stationary during the initial hit on the one. I have my table trained, so I get a tight rack every time, even without a racking template or triangle. For more information, see the link in the video description. I just hand position the balls on the small cloth dents, nudge the back balls forward a touch, and rub on the outside balls to make sure everything is tight. This gives a perfect rack every time. In this section, I always place the nine balls in the same numbered pattern so you can see what happens from each ball position. The way you know the rack is tight is if the nine ball stays mostly in place during the break. Here's an example of the nine almost going in the corner. It would have if I had controlled the cue ball better. Here's one that goes with the cue ball on the head spot. Two other balls also went with the nine on that break. Hitting the one at a slight angle from the center is no different than hitting the one squarely from a slight angle. The slight angled hit sends the eight at a slight angle to be able to cut the nine. With a little more cue ball angle, here are some examples of trying to pocket the nine in the side. This one goes just below the side, just above the side, toward the side with not enough speed, almost getting kissed in the side, and heading to the side with an unfortunate kiss. One advantage of this approach is the eight is natural to kiss off the nine and go on the opposite side. Here, I'm showing this with my trusty 30 degree roll peace sign. A wide range of hits on the nine will send the eight to the side. Look how the eight goes with the nine going in many different directions. Here, the four also dropped with the eight, kissing off the six to the top corner. Okay. 
And in case you thought that was a fluke, the same thing happened on this brake. Here, the four kisses off the six to the bottom corner. If you hit the one with too much angle, it is equivalent to breaking from the side with the square hit, so the wing ball goes in the corner as expected. And with even more cut on the one, you can pocket the wing ball and the one in the side. And with a fuller hit on the one, but still with a slight cut, the one can also go to the upper corner. Other balls can also go when attempting the 8-9 combo kiss approach. The wing ball 5 usually goes three rails toward the upper corner like this. Here's another. Sometimes the four goes two rails and kisses off the five to the upper corner. Again, you might think that was a fluke, but here it is happening again. And again. Sometimes the six gets kissed in by the four. Here are several examples. The problem with the 8-9 combo kiss approach is that often, even with a good hit, the 8 doesn't go, and the 9 doesn't go, and nothing else goes, potentially leaving your opponent with an easy run out. Another way to get a golden break is if there are gaps in the rack behind the 9. Sometimes gaps in the rack are difficult to avoid, and it is helpful to be able to read a rack to your advantage. Here's an excerpt from the video encyclopedia of 9-ball and 10-ball, Vent, that demonstrates how this approach works. When there are no gaps in the rack, we have seen in previous sections that the 9-ball does not move from the rack area unless it is kissed by a moving ball. However, with gaps in the rack, that is no longer true. Also, if the gap happens to be behind the 9-ball, you can actually pocket the 9 on the break for the win, with a little luck. Since my table and balls rack tightly, small pieces of tissue paper are used to simulate gaps in different locations. Here, there are tissue gaps between the 6 and 9 and 4 and 9. These gaps give the 9-ball room to kiss off the 7 toward the corner. Breaking from the same side of the table as the gap, in this case on the 6 side, gives the best chance to pocket the 9. In this case, the cue ball will send energy through the 1 and 3 into the 9 so it can kiss off the 7. The gap between the 6 and 9 gives the 6 just enough time to clear. Unfortunately, it doesn't work every time, but that was close. Here, there is a tissue gap between the 7 and 9, and there is also a natural gap between the 6 and 7. Again, Bob is breaking from the same side of the table as the gap behind the 9, in this case on the 7 side of the table. The ideal line to break along will depend on the gap size and other gaps in the rack, but in general, try shooting along a line just past the first diamond. Again, watch the 9 ball. That counts as a win, so always look for a gap behind the 9 and break from that side of the table. You might get lucky. The final way to pocket the 9 on the snap is just to get lucky. Let's look at some examples. Here, I get a lucky carom combo. Billy Thorpe hits this one well and pockets 5 balls, but he was lucky for the 9 to drop. Here is another lucky kiss from Ralph Souquet. Well, I got lucky. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed my presentation of the various techniques for getting a golden break. Hopefully, they will let you get lucky more often against less knowledgeable opponents. Good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.
Thank you.